Assalamu alaikum yo 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 what's happening guys my name is Sif and welcome back to another video so in my last video I talked about all my tips for form 4 chemistry in this video I will continue talking about form 5 first chapter is rate of reaction literally the easiest chapter ever you can go through the notes yourself but i want to focus on the diagram down here using this diagram you can answer all the essay questions for example if the surface area of reactant increases more surface area will be exposed for reaction this will increase the frequency collision and increase the frequency of effective collision thus rate of reaction increase and when the concentration of reactant increases there will be a higher number of particles per unit volume this will cause the frequency collision to increase and the frequency of effective collision to increase as well thus rate of reaction increase when the temperature of reactant increase the kinetic energy of particles will increase and the particles will move faster more particles will reach activation energy faster this will cause the frequency collision to increase and the frequency of effective collision to increase thus rate of reaction increase and lastly when there is a presence of catalyst the activation energy is lowered so more particles will reach activation energy this will cause the frequency collision to increase and frequency of effective collision to increase. Thus, rate of reaction increase. At the end of the reaction, catalyst is chemically unchanged. So as you can see, just with this one small diagram, you can answer pretty much every single essay question for rate of reaction. So make sure to memorize this. Okay, next is carbon compound. For carbon compound, there is not much to explain because you basically have to memorize all the reactions. Just like all the other topics, I have made a simplified version of this one as well. I will leave a link to download all my notes in the description down below. Make sure to go through this and memorize as much as you can before your exam. Okay, next is redox. This is an interesting topic which I have quite a number of things to explain. Firstly, we all know that redox is reduction and oxidation. And there are four things that you need to know. A substance undergoes reduction when the oxidation number decreases, the number of electrons increase, the number of oxygen decrease, and the number of hydrogen increase. And for oxidation, it's the complete opposite. One important thing that you need to know is that the most accurate way to know if a substance is undergoing reduction or oxidation is through the change of oxidation number and the number of electrons. Number of oxygen and hydrogen is not that accurate so it's better to prevent using that okay now i have a question for you does this equation undergo redox reaction take some time to think and pause the video if you want so basically what you have to do is draw a line between mg and mg and o and o and then check the oxidation number at each ends so the oxidation number of mg went from zero to plus two thus it is oxidation and the oxidation number of oxygen went from zero to negative two therefore it undergo reduction so yes the process undergoes redox the next thing i want you to be familiar with is the ion exchange for redox so like when you see fe2 plus you know straight away that the product will be fe3 plus and when you look at chlorine you know automatically that the product will be cl minus if you remember all of this it'll be very very efficient during the exam okay next example i want you to balance this equation it's quite a long one so again pause the video balance the equation and then click play again so basically what you have to do is separate fe2 plus fe3 plus and mno4 negative and mn2 plus basically categorize them according to their compound next look at the fe2 plus and fe3 plus at the left we can see that the charges are not balanced so in order to balance it we add one electron at the right so that now both the left and right charges are plus two and for mno4 things are a bit messy basically since mno4 ada empat oxygen kita kena tambah empat h2o dekat sebelah kanan and then because sekarang kita ada extra lapan hydrogen dari empat h2o kita kena tambah lapan h plus dekat kiri and then now Baru kita check total charge kiri dan kanan. Dekat kiri kita ada plus 7 dan dekat kanan kita ada plus 2. So untuk balance kita kena tambah negative 5 dekat kiri iaitu 5 elektron. And just like that half equation dah balance. Tapi untuk full equation kita kena compare number of elektron dekat kedua equation ni. Warna hijau hanya ada satu elektron dan warna ungu ada 5 elektron. So kita kena kali half equation hijau ni dengan 5. And then tulis dua equation ni atas each other. And then cut 5 elektron tu and then tulis balik semua elemen-elemen tu and settle macam tu je kita dah dapat full equation dia benda ni Asif ingat lagi dulu Asif ingat macam susah sangat padahal senang je just kena ingat step-step tu kalau korang tali keep up dengan apa yang Asif explain rewind balik and tengok beberapa kali sampai betul-betul katam sebab soalan ni memang selalu keluar Next, Asif nak cerita pasal agents. Ada dua jenis agent. Yang pertama, oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent undergoes reduction by accepting electrons. Example, potassium manganese 7, potassium dichromate 6, and group 17 molecules. Example, chlorine. Cl2 plus 2E becomes 2Cl minus. Cl2 accepts electrons and undergoes reduction. Therefore, chlorine is an oxidizing agent. Next is a reducing agent. Reducing agent undergoes oxidation by removing electrons. Examples are metals and group 17 ions. 
When I look at the examples from sodium and chlorine ion, sodium releases one electron to become sodium ion and chlorine ion releases two electrons to become chlorine molecule. As you can see, both substances remove electrons and undergo oxidation, thus they are reducing agent. Look at the difference between group 17 molecules and group 17 ions. One accepts electrons and one removes electron. Do not confuse these two and be very clear. I've got another question for you guys. It's from transfer of electrons at a distance in YouTube. It's quite a long one but question in paper 2 section A will be something like this but even longer. As usual, pause the video, try to answer all the questions and then click play to watch my explanation. Okay, so we have YouTube with one side having Cl2 solution and the other side having potassium iodide solution. The solution down the YouTube is called an X. That is all the information that they are giving us. First question is what can be used as X? Now X can be literally anything that conducts electricity. But the safest answer that you can write is aqueous sulfuric acid. So try to memorize this. Now the second and third question is asking the oxidizing and reducing agent. Fourth question is asking for the positive terminal, the negative terminal and the direction of flow of electrons. And finally the fifth question is asking us to write down the half equations at both terminals. So for me, I prefer to answer number 5 first before answering 2, 3, 4. This is so that I can immediately see what kind of reaction is going on. So firstly, we have chlorine. So when I look at chlorine, I automatically know that the product will be Cl-. And then Ki solution, you can just cut the K because no one really cares about the K. We are only focusing on the I-. And when I looked at I-, I know straight away that it will be I2 molecule. So using these two information, now I can quickly write the half equation which is Cl2 plus 2E becomes 2Cl minus and 2i minus becomes i2 plus 2e. I got to solve this very quickly because I memorized the table that I showed you guys before. Knowing all of this makes the question so much easier. Okay back to the question. Now that we have the half equation, now we know which solution releases electrons and which solution accepts electrons. So basically chlorine accepts electrons and iodine releases electrons. So using this information, I draw arrows on the wires. And then I also know that electrons travel from the negative to the positive terminal. Electron punya rumah ialah negative terminal. So masa reaction start dia akan keluar rumah pergi positive terminal. So using this information, I know that the right side is the negative terminal and the left side is the positive terminal. And then lastly, I know that the oxidizing agent undergoes a reduction by accepting electrons. From the diagram and the half equation, we can clearly see that chlorine is accepting electrons. Therefore, chlorine is the oxidizing agent and iodine ion is releasing electrons and undergoing oxidation. So potassium iodide solution is the reducing agent. And just like that, you have solved this very weird looking question. I can assure you that this will be one of the questions that comes out for the exam. So please, please, please try to understand this. And then lastly for redox, I have another diagram which shows the color change of the redox reactions. If possible, try to memorize all of this as well as it will give you at least two to three marks. Next, we got thermochemistry. There are only two types of reactions which are exothermic and endothermic. I've given all the explanations for each reaction and a lot of examples so go through all of it and make sure you know exactly how to draw the energy level diagram and an energy profile diagram. These two are different diagrams and you need to know how to do both of them. And then below that I have given you the simplified version of all exothermic reactions which are combustion, precipitation, displacement and neutralization. Make sure you go through all of this as well and memorize the definition of each reaction. Just one thing I want you to remember is that in neutralization, when a strong acid reacts with a strong alkali, the heat will be negative 57 kilojoules per mole. This is the standard that you need to know. If the heat change is less than negative 57 kilojoules per mole, it means that either one of the acids and alkali are weak or both of them are weak. High chance for this question to come out in paper 1 so take note of this. And the last topic of SPM chemistry syllabus, chemical for consumers. Again, just like form 4 chapter 9, I don't really have much to explain in this chapter as it's pretty much full of memorizing. So I have made the simplified notes for this chapter. It's three pages long. If you're aiming for A+, try to memorize everything. And if you're aiming for A-, I still suggest you to go through this because it's safer, but only do it if you have extra time and you've already mastered everything else. If not, just read this topic once before the exam and inshallah. And for those aiming pass or credit topic ni kalau tak baca pun tak apa. Without this topic, you can still easily get pass or credit. And that's all from me in this video guys. Not gonna lie, I really struggled to make this video because at the start I had absolutely no last minute tips for this subject as it's all about understanding. And at the end, I just decided to screw it and just explain as many things as I can and give you all the notes for all the chapters. So please do leave a like if this video was in any way beneficial to you and subscribe if you want to make me happy. 
And that's all from me, good luck, and as always, aim for the best, never settle for less, and let God handle the rest. Peace!